Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the new techniques in Synthize 2011 to help identify problematic trackers and problematic frames on those trackers. So here we have a shot that contains some problematic elements, namely a whole bunch of moving water and a whole bunch of uh, leaves and branches that are blowing in the wind. So we're going to start out with a generic auto track and it's going to generate a bunch of trackers, some of which are good and some of the, which are not. It's the idea is to uh, identify which are which and then be able to do something about it. Now Synthize has always featured the uh, cleanup trackers tool, which is one way to identify that. But uh, for this tutorial, we're going to concentrate on just uh, some of the new methods in 2011, starting out with a new display technique called Tracker Radar. And as you see here, there's a circle that reflects the amount of error on a given tracker on a particular frame. So as I scrub through the shot, you'll see these, uh, these circles getting larger and larger on some of the trackers, and other trackers remain relatively small throughout the shot. So this is a quick way to, to identify things that are problematic. When you scrub through, you'll see that the area over to the side where the, all these branches and uh, pieces of grass are, you know, th those areas are problematic and probably we should have mat matted those out ahead of time. Or at this point, maybe we just want to go and do a lasso select and delete a whole bunch of those trackers. But the important thing is we've got a real quick way to take a look at what's going on in the scene and show us where the errors are, what areas are problematic. One thing I I'll point out is that the size of these circles depends on the overall error in the shot. So if you go and you delete a whole bunch of trackers, so everything isn't going to magically going to get small and stay small. Instead, the size of the circles is going to rescale based on the overall scene error so that you'll, you'll see then what the new biggest uh, errors are on the tracker. So you can you wind up uh, chasing your tail uh, continuously if you try and drive all those to uh, to be very tiny. That's that's not going to happen. So that's one way to uh, identify things. Let's uh, turn that back off for now, and now take a look at the the trackers themselves. And uh, we have a technique that's a new little script that goes and assigns a color to each of the trackers based on the amount of error over the entire shot for that tracker. So here you can see the parameters for it. There's the color and the error and you know color for error and you know basically it's green, yellow, red sorts of colors. Probably the red choice isn't really the best choice to use. It should be orange or something just because we use red for selected. But uh, we go and uh, run that script and now you see that all of the trackers have particular colors assigned to them. You know, many of these are green that are down on the rocks. They're nice and stable. And of course we have red all throughout the branches and everything that are blowing in the wind. And we have some, some yellow scattered around here that you know, we have to take a look at and decide maybe you know, whether they're usable or not. You know, maybe some of the yellow ones we want to go and repair a little rather than just deleting them outright. Now, one aspect of this script is that it actually uses a second set of colors so that I can, after having run this script, I can go back and turn off this alternate color setting. And now I get back to the original set of colors. So, you know, if you've gone ahead of time and, and assigned colors to uh, different groups of trackers to, to keep track of them and see what's uh, what's what, you're not going to lose that set of colors just because you run this RMS uh, coloring script. And I can actually go back and forth and, you know, get those colors back that were assigned by the script. And, you know, I could repeat running the script or, you know, turn this uh, use alternate colors back on and off as much as I need. So that's a rather handy tool. And again, you know, the idea is to find out where the problems are relatively quickly and be able to decide what to do about it. So that's two new methods for that in 2011. Thanks.